Sam Bankman-Fried, the former CEO of FTX, a 30-year-old so-called genius who appeared on the covers of Forbes and Fortune with the headlines, The Next Warren Buffett? And only Zuck has been as rich this young. Well, as you probably know, it has all turned out to be a freaking lie. Just a few months ago, he was a billionaire with an estimated net worth of $26.5 billion. Today, however, Bloomberg considers him to have no material wealth at all, not to mention his recent arrest and possible trial for stealing money from clients. So what's behind his downfall? Is he really as innocent and altruistic as he appears to be in front of the cameras? And was he really engaged in a polyamorous relationship with his 10 roommates? Stay tuned for The Rise and Fall of Sam Bankman-Fried. Sam Bankman-Fried, also known as SBF, was born on March 6, 1992 on the Stanford University campus. A pretty decent starting point for a genius, don't you think? His parents, Barbara Freed and Joseph Bankman, were professors at Stanford Law School. Both of them promoted topics like utilitarianism and effective altruism, which had a great impact on SBF's adolescent worldview. He grew up in a house in the middle of Stanford's campus and attended the local private academy for elites, Crystal Springs Uplands School, where tuition now costs a whopping $56,000 a year. So yeah, looks like he had a rather luxurious childhood. Nevertheless, he spent most of his time alone playing video games like StarCraft and League of Legends, and in the summertime, participated in the Canada-USA math camp for mathematically talented teenagers. Therefore, it should not be a big surprise that he got accepted to MIT, where he joined a small fraternity called Epsilon Theta, and also became a vegetarian. Eventually, Bankman graduated in 2014 with a bachelor's degree in physics and a minor in mathematics. Soon after, he landed a job at Jane Street Capital, one of the world's largest market maker companies that specializes in proprietary trading. Half of the money earned there he donated to various charities. After three years, however, he left Wall Street to pursue two other things he was interested in. The first one of them was crypto specifically setting up his own cryptocurrency trading firm. Unfortunately, Bankman didn't know much about cryptocurrencies back then, and so he also decided to pursue his other passion just in case, which was, of course, helping others. In September 2017, Bankman started working as Director of Development at the Center for Effective Altruism. In the same month, he was able to convince his Epsilon Theta friend, Gary Wang, to quit Google and help him in setting up his crypto business. Unlike Bankman, Wang knew a thing or two about Bitcoin and even had made a couple of thousand dollars trading it during his MIT days. And so, Two months later, SBF quit the Center for Effective Altruism and together with its ex-CEO, Tara McAuley, founded a quantitative trading company called Alameda Research. In January 2018, SBF found the proverbial goose that laid the golden eggs. He noticed that Bitcoin was running at $10,000 on the US exchange and $11,000 on its Japanese counterpart. Bankman applied a buy-low, sell-high strategy, which turned out to be a bullseye. At one point, Alameda was moving up to $25 million a day. To keep the momentum going, Sam brought on deck his college friend and former colleagues from Wall Street and CEA. Meanwhile, he and Wang moved to Hong Kong to strike while the iron was hot, and specifically to found the infamous FTX. Despite a rough start, FTX eventually became the second largest cryptocurrency exchange in the world and made Bankman, its CEO, one of the most influential persons in the crypto industry. People fell in love with his humble persona and philanthropic worldview. Employees of Alameda originally were required to donate at least 50% of their salaries to effective altruism charities and Bankman personally committed to them $16.5 billion from himself and FTX. Despite being a billionaire, he was still driving a Toyota Corolla. In February of this year, 
FTX even gave away $25 to every Ukrainian account holder as a sign of support in the ongoing conflict there. Oh boy, what a guy! This almost sounds like something too good to be true, right? Well, because it actually was. Well, maybe he was driving a Toyota Corolla, but for sure he was flying in his private jet, reportedly a Gulfstream G450, which currently costs around $40 million. Not bad, huh? But wait, there's even more. In September 2021, SBF moved FTX headquarters to the Albany Resort in the Bahamas. The new HQ was a luxury $40 million penthouse with six bedrooms, two elevators, manicured grounds, a golf course, and a boat basin packed with super yachts. Well, of course, there's nothing wrong with the fact that Bankman kept some money for himself. After all, he likely donated more money to charities than most other billionaires. But this shows that his image isn't perfect by any means and that he probably quietly did many other things behind his clients' backs. But back to the story. According to ex-employees of FTX, Bankman shared a penthouse with 10 roommates, mostly his longtime friends, and reportedly they were all, or still are, paired up in romantic relationships with each other. One of the members of his inner circle was Carolyn Ellison, now former CEO of Alameda. She met Bankman when they were both working on Jane Street. At some point, they were dating for an unspecified period of time. What's really interesting, one of her Tumblr posts seems to confirm claims about those polyamorous relationships. When I first started my foray into poly, I thought of it as a radical break from my trad past. But to be honest, I've come to decide that the only acceptable style of poly is best characterized as something like imperial Chinese harem. None of this non-hierarchical bullshit. Everyone should have a ranking of their partners. People should know where they fall in the ranking, and there should be vicious power struggles for the higher ranks. These relationships would indicate nepotism in SBF's company. Her other post, this time coming from Twitter, suggests, on the other hand, that drugs were also present in the everyday lives of the SBF inner circle. Nothing like regular amphetamine use to make you appreciate how dumb a lot of normal, non-medicated human experience is. These pieces of information have definitely sullied SBF's reputation as an altruist, but the main factor behind his downfall was his engagement in politics. You see, one of the main features of cryptocurrency is its decentralized structure. Through the years, Bankman donated tens of millions of dollars to support Democratic Party, and reportedly also Republicans. In exchange for this support, he wanted the government to put regulations on the crypto market that would be beneficial for his company, but at the same time destructive for his competition. Eventually, his rivals saw through his plan and plunged FTX into bankruptcy overnight with just one tweet, while also revealing SBF's sins in the process. But that's the story for another video. On December 12, 2022, Sam Bankman Freed was arrested in his penthouse and will probably face extradition to the United States where a trial awaits him. He has dragged everyone down with him, not only colleagues and clients, but also his family. SBF's parents reportedly have been scrubbed from Stanford University offerings next semester, and his younger brother Gabe resigned from guarding against pandemics in November. In the coming videos, we'll take a closer look at the potential trial and criminal activities within FTX and Alameda. Let us know in the comments what you think about the whole situation. Be sure to like and subscribe for more content about famous entrepreneurs and how they got rich. Who knows, maybe you'll also be featured here one day. Thanks for watching and see you next time.